While I was doing my little gaming archaeology project, my backlog never stopped haunting me. Specifically, there was one game that I wanted to reinstall for ages. Mostly because, back in the late 2000s, the virus blew up my computer right in the middle of its playthrough. And that game was Rise of the Argonauts, a Greek mythology-inspired action RPG. Sounds cool, but is it actually fun to play, especially almost a decade later? Well, let's find out! Before we dive into this game, let me give you a bit of context. The year is 2007, Mass Effect and God of War 2 are one of the hottest things on the market. Meanwhile, the latest Zack Snyder's movie 300 triumphed at the box office and gave us one of the most iconic scenes in movie history. This is Sparta! So one day, guys from the studio called Liquid Entertainment looked at those three blockbusters and thought that it would be a good idea to fuse them into their own game. Because in that case, the results would be three times better, am I right? Well, usually it doesn't work that way, but it's probably what Codemasters thought when they took this project under their wing. I mean, getting inspiration from successful competitors is not an inherently bad thing, but statistically only a few of such copycats live up to the source material, and creating Mass Effect in ancient Greece is not something that even AAA studios can do easily. While such an ambition is definitely worth your respect, you can't help but to wonder where it came from. Before making Rise of the Argonauts, Liquid Entertainment developed a few critically acclaimed strategies, such as Battle Realms. But they also created games like Desperate Housewives Tying. And what they didn't make yet back then was action RPGs, which didn't give much confidence in the final product. Add controversial marketing to the pile and you'll have all signs of a disaster. Fish for sale, fish for sale, fish for sale today! They were swimming in the ocean and now they're on the docks here on my Sunday! And you know, after playing Rise of the Argonauts for a few hours, I was ready to drop it and scrap this video altogether. The convoluted and badly paced intro is definitely the worst part of this game. Without much explanation, you jump right into the action when some ugly assholes crush the wedding and kill your wife. The game hastily explains that you are the King Jason, the proud ruler of a small island of Iolcus. Apparently, that ridiculously ripe guy that follows you everywhere is not some wrestler from a different universe, but a Hercules, your friend and legendary hero. Together, you quickly kick the asses of intruders and, with the blessing of gods, go on a quest in search of a way to bring your wife back to life. But just when you are getting ready for an epic adventure, the game suddenly makes a full stop and suggests you explore the island before leaving. So instead of racing against time to save your beloved, you'll spend hours on doing primitive fetch quests that don't really match your royal status. Well, to be fair, developers got at least one essential aspect of the RPG genre right. I'll give them that. Of course, why burden them? The uninspiring side activities wouldn't have been such a big deal if there was something worthwhile in between. But instead, all that Rise of the Argonauts offers to you at first is mundane dialogues with identical NPCs and backtracking through frustratingly empty environments. As much as I advocate for games to incorporate minimalistic interface more often, in the case of Rise of the Argonauts, the lack of mini-map, or at least a compass, is a huge design mistake. Not only do you have to go to the pause menu each time you want to check where's your next destination, but seeing those ludicrously linear maps in their full glory makes the game's world feel artificial more than anything. Not to mention that the UI breaks at screen resolutions above 1080p, so keep that in mind in case you experience the same issue. And most surprisingly, for an action RPG, Rise of the Argonauts offers very little action to the player. Seriously, I've got an achievement of killing 50 enemies only after 4 hours of playing this game. 
It's baffling because the combat is arguably the best part of Rise of the Argonauts. Slaying treacherous scum and mythical creatures who stand in your way is actually a lot of fun. Your arsenal includes a sword, a mace and a spear that you can switch at any moment to perform combos with light and heavy attacks. There are also special moves like dodge and shield bash and a bunch of magic abilities that you can activate in crucial moments of the fight. And of course, you can expect a few boss battles that would require a special approach. The combat of Rise of the Argonauts is nothing spectacular, but it happens so rarely, you just won't have time to get bored with it. Don't get me wrong, I love story-driven games, and the ancient Greek setting is among my favorites, but the RPG part of Rise of the Argonauts is disappointingly lacking in depths. First of all, despite having a dialogue wheel like in Mass Effect that prompts you to make difficult choices, your decisions would never significantly change the course of the story. Secondly, there is no exploration aspect. Every island that you'll visit is nothing more than just a bunch of arenas connected with a few bland corridors. There are no hidden treasures or chests to discover, you'll get all equipment as a reward for completing quests. So the only role-playing that you'll be able to do in this game is to slightly adjust the attitude of your character in dialogues. Considering that the quality of the writing never reaches at least the level of Bioware games, it's really not much. Let this be the last time you question my honor. The sound design of Rise of the Argonauts is also a mixed bag. For the soundtrack, developers didn't cheap out and managed to get on board the composer of the 300 movie, Tyler Bates. The music creates most of the atmosphere of this game, so it was definitely a great choice. On the other hand, while dialogues are fully voiced, their quality is inconsistent. Sound mixing is all over the place, with some of the voice lines being too quiet. Another issue of dialogues is awkward pauses between sentences that occasionally happens and make them sound unnatural. He's a black tongue, Jason. Stay here, Idis. Leave me. You men, go with the king. As you can see, Rise of the Argonauts fails tremendously with giving the player a good first impression. And most of these downsides that I've just mentioned would persist for the rest of the game. But if you'll manage to endure the tedious intro, things will get much better. The true potential of Rise of the Argonauts reveals when you acquire the Argo, your personal ship. It serves a similar purpose as the Normandy from Mass Effect. Here you can store your equipment, talk with your companions and choose the next destination of your journey. After speaking with Oracle of Delphi, you'll have three locations that you can visit in any order. The Argo. Jason and the Argonauts. There's a fine title for a tale. Again, just like in Mass Effect, each island has a unique biome and features a subplot and mysteries that you have to unravel. Once you've done with the main task, some of the locals would join the ship crew to provide support in your quest. Between missions, you can discuss various topics with them and learn more about their past and motives. There is even a select screen where you can choose two companions that will follow you on the next island. Sometimes you can also overhear them arguing about the current mission. Why didn't Athena simply turn the Ionians into stone and spare the Kithrans? Perhaps Athena believed everyone was culpable to some degree for the theft of the fleece. How could you blame children, though? I knew that this game was inspired by Mass Effect, but I didn't expect to see a literal carbon copy of it. And it's actually a positive thing in my eyes, considering how few games that were made not by Bioware managed to scratch the same itch. Where's your laughter now? Thankfully, developers haven't just blindly replicated the mechanics of Mass Effect and put them into ancient Greece setting. Another thing that stands out about Rise of the Argonauts is how it handles its progression. The game doesn't have an experience bar and character sheet like in your typical RPG. Instead, you unlock new skills and abilities by gaining the favor of the gods. After completing quests and in-game achievements, like killing a specific amount of enemies, 
you can dedicate those heroic deeds to your favorite deity and receive useful bonuses in return. It's an interesting concept, but I wish developers didn't stop here and enhance it further. Imagine if favoring one of the gods too much would have pissed off the others, so they'll curse you with the buffs until you crawl back to their altar and beg for mercy. That would have definitely spiced up the gameplay and made you be more mindful about which skills you want to acquire next. Boons! Unlike you, Athena, the Lord of Battle does not offer gifts. The Lord of Battle rewards the worthy. And that's basically the whole Rise of the Argonauts. A cool concept, but with a lot of missed opportunities. It's not a bad game per se. You can feel the actual effort that was put into making it. But I would guess that at some point in its creation, developers realized that they don't have enough experience nor budget for such an ambitious project. And to finish it in time, they dramatically downscaled and streamlined the gameplay to not accidentally break anything. But in doing this, they oversimplified and unbalanced both action and RPG parts of Rise of the Argonauts. This is indeed an interesting genre fusion, and I don't regret spending 14 hours to beat it. But if you are looking for a non-stop action or well-written RPG with a dynamic world, it probably won't be able to fully satisfy your appetites. It's a painfully mediocre experience that has a few enjoyable moments, but it never goes past beyond just being serviceable. Before I conclude this review, a few words about the technical state of this game on PC. Unfortunately, despite producing RTS games before making Rise of the Argonauts, developers really have dropped the ball with this one. It's a very typical console port from the 2000s that doesn't feature any graphics options except for screen resolution. You can disable VSync and unlock the frame rate by editing the ini file, but I don't recommend doing this because it increases the chances that the game will crash. Even during my playthrough with default settings, Rise of the Argonauts randomly crashed a few times. But one thing that I do recommend you to do is to add the non-startup movies line to launch options, so you won't have to waste 20 seconds looking at logos each time you want to play this game. Have you decided on our destination, Jason? Rise of the Argonauts is a tragically flawed game, a wasted potential for something truly great. Sadly, the studio didn't have a second chance to prove themselves, and soon after its release has pivoted towards licensed and casual games, until it was dissolved in 2018. Despite that, Rise of the Argonauts is still available in digital storefronts and constantly goes on a deep sale. So if you are in a mood for some Mass Effect Lite experience, I would say give it a shot. It's a one-time ride with a few ups and downs, and I highly doubt that this game will stay for long in your heart once you'll beat it. But considering that the latest Mass Effect game was released over 5 years ago, and the new one would come god knows when, I believe that even just being a copycat of this franchise can be considered as a good selling point these days. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more.